All right, this is a second part of a forecasting series on how to better predict inside of CAPSIM the number of units you're going to sell. All right, so previously we've talked in class quite a bit about how to do some basic forecasting. And the reason why this is so important is because it's the one thing you really don't control in the game. You can decide how many units to make, you can decide about plant expansion, and you can decide all sorts of things. But the one thing you can't do is make your products actually sell to the market. So in this, we're going to talk about a couple different ways of how the game actually works in terms of forecasting. So let's start off with some basics. Let's look at the fast track to get some basic ideas about the industry. If I look at the low-tech market, I can see the total industry demand up here on top, along with the growth rate. That's a good starting point to try and figure out how many units my product is going to be able to sell. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, in my sheet here, I'm going to start entering this information. So my segment total size is 6,000 units, or literally it's 6 million units, but it's easier just to talk about it in terms of thousands. And I have a growth rate of 5%. The first formula I'm going to want to put together is going to basically take the 6%, take the 5% of 6,000, and then add back in the 6,000. That tells me how large the market's going to be at the end of the round. Let's look at the next piece. If I go back to the report and scroll down some more, I'll see the total number of units that are currently on the marketplace. Right now I can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six different products that are currently selling in low tech. Let's do an assumption. Let's go ahead and assume that all the products are equivalent. In other words, that they're all equally good. If we do that, we split up this larger number right here into six equal sized parts, and that gives us our first estimation. So this is really an effective way of estimating your unit sales as long as all the products are relatively similar. So that's one way of doing it. Let's try another way. Another way would be look at what you sold last round. Let's say for April, for example. Last round, April sold 1,438,000 or 1.4 million. So I'm going to put roughly the in there. Now, what we're doing here is we're saying take, to take your last year's sales and increase them by the growth rate in the market. In other words, if the market's going to expand by 5%, then increase your sales by 5% as well. And that gives you an estimation of what you're going to sell in the next round. So these are, are two basic, easy to understand kind of approaches. But the last one is really where we get most of the power in forecasting. What we're going to do is look at how Capsum actually calculates sales in each round. The way this works is that Capsum is really looking just at one number. That number is right here, it's called customer survey score, and this is just says that it's in December. All of the other things we have here, performance, size, price, promo budget, sales budget, that all really feeds into this one single factor on the side here. What Capson will do is each round, sorry, each, each month in the game, it's gonna go ahead and add up all the scores in that market. So in other words, 36 plus 36 plus 37 plus 24 plus 29 plus 12. So that gives us all six product lines and how many products they have. Then it's going to say what each product score is. So say if we're still the top product, we have the score of 36. If I divide 36 by 174, I end up with a percentage of 21%. That basically means that all the units that are for sale that month or that year, I'm going to get 21% of those. So I want to figure out what that number actually is. So now I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the total size of the market. And that'll give me the total size of the market that I should expect to sell with product sales of 36 units. So I'm gonna change it out of the percent mode and back to normal mode here, get absolute units. Okay, so now I have three different estimates for my forecast for next round. The first one is looking at sort of a natural market share concept, and it says that if all the products are equal, I should expect to sell about 1 million units. The second option looks at my last year's sales and tries to grow up by the market rate and gives me a rate sale count of 1.4 million units. The last one actually looks at my product's customer survey score and gives me 1.3. Now the important thing here is that none of these are necessarily right or wrong. They're all just guidelines on trying to help you estimate out what the most likely scenario is. So if I look at this, what I'm going to be trying to figure out is what will my customer survey score be next year? The reason why Abel probably has a higher score here, um, sorry, higher sales than, than other products, um, is going to change throughout the year. For example, you see they have a revision date of 8, 12, 2018 versus Cake, which has a revision date of 6, 13, 2019. 
Because those products were revised at different times during the year, their customer survey scores are going to be better or worse on different months. So I can kind of estimate those, say for Abel, is Abel going to get better or worse? Maybe I'm planning on dropping the price by a couple dollars. I think my customer survey score is going to go up from 36 to say around 40. I can plug that in and now I have an estimation of how good it's going to be. Or maybe I know it's going to go down. Maybe I made a mistake with the R&D and I can't move it this year as it's doing a long project. I think it's going to drop to more like 20. Now let's me also modify it there. Or you could say maybe there's going to be a new product in the marketplace. If you go back to your reports on Capsim, you'll notice the production line is being able to shown here. And on the production line, we can see new products that are going to come online. So if A2, for example, we see it has a price of $45, supposedly. It has some age and it has automation and capacity. So you can look through here and try and guess if some of these are going to sell in the low tech or high tech market. If they are, what you can do is come back here and modify these. If there's going to be a new product here, I might change this to a 7. So now that's going to make me more cautious in terms of my estimations for this round. Or maybe you have a product that's leaving the marketplace and it's going to go to, down to 5. That makes you more positive. You can do the same thing with the sum of scores. Let's say you know you're going to have a new product on the market that you think will have a score of around 30. If we add on 30, now we can see that the sum of scores has gone up. My score stays the same, and so my overall estimation of sales has now dipped pretty dramatically. Maybe I think I should improve my, my, um, my price to kind of benefit that. So I go back up to a score of 35. Now I have another estimation of about 1,000 units. So the basic idea here is that you can use these to kind of create a range of the best and the worst case scenarios. But it's important to always use your judgment here. None of these are going to be exactly right or exactly wrong, but hopefully they'll give you a way to think about some of the different factors and try and calculate out numbers that are reasonable.